Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Councilman Jim Waring. And joining me on today's show is Phoenix Public Works Director, Ginger Spencer. Ginger, welcome to the show and thanks for being on. Thank you, Councilman Waring. I think it's the first time on the show, so really excited to have you here. Um, just want to start off with a couple of the basics as Public Works Director. How many folks do you have working for you? Yeah, so for Public Works Department, we're the fourth largest uh, department in the city with a thousand employees. Mm -hmm. So we're responsible for solid waste management uh, and also fleet uh, and facilities for the city of Phoenix. So you see you know, the trucks going around, picking up garbage, picking up the recycling, that's all you. That is all of Public Works, uh, and that's what we're known for in the community, is really our service to our customers, to single family residents. So we're out there picking up their garbage and recycling each and every week in every single neighborhood throughout the city of Phoenix. How many trucks do we have going out? Yeah, so we have about 300 trucks that go out each and every day to pick up trash. Um, but our entire program is about 600 people that actually are responsible for collecting the waste, picking it up, running our transfer stations, our recycling plants, which we call our material recovery facilities, or MRFs um, for short, as well as our landfills. Um, so it's a large operation. Um, but about 300 people and trucks that are each and out there each and every day. So the 300 people and their trucks go out, they pick up the trash. Where does it go? What happens to yeah, it? Yeah, so in Phoenix we do same day collection where we actually pick up your garbage and your recycling on the same day to try to make it easy for our customers. And so our drivers... And that was a relatively recent change. That was, you know, yes. Four or five just, years ago? Just four or five years ago. Saved a lot of money with the scheduling and everything. It did. It saved yeah. about a million dollars to the yeah. city. A year. A year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was a great efficiency and cost savings that we were able to do just by doing the uh, pickup on the same and day. And it saved a lot more than we expected when we voted for it, if I remember right. That is correct, yes. So we were saying, oh, about a million dollars, and it was about a million plus that we were able to save, about a million three. Um, and so it's very efficient. We're out there each and every day. Um, our drivers pick up the garbage. We have one that picks up the garbage, one that picks up the recycling. And then if it's the garbage, if it's in your um, green container, then it actually goes to the transfer station. And from there, then we actually have long haul trucks that actually um, take the trash, the garbage, and they take it out to our landfill, our op one open landfill, which is located in the city of Buckeye, 60 miles outside of Phoenix. Um, and they basically take the garbage there to the landfill and dump it, and then it stays there forever. Um, so we send about a million tons of trash to the landfill each and every year. On the recycling side, when you put your recyclables in your blue container, we have one of our drivers pick that up and then it goes to our MRF. Uh, and we have two MRFs located throughout the city, one in South Phoenix off of 27th Avenue in Lower Buckeye, and then one uh, in northern part of town at North Gateway, which is off of um, Dixaletta. Then what we do is we work with our operator, which is now Republic Services, and they will actually sell the recyclables on the market. And so that brings in revenue to the city. Um, and so a lot of time the recyclables actually will end up going to China and then they'll be repurposed there. So how much do we make from the recyclables? Because I think that's something people don't recognize when yes. they recycle, which I think people are very excited about. Mm -hmm. I was very excited to, to read that uh, District 2 has the highest, yes. I think, percentage of recycling. <laughs> We're very proud of that in District 2. I'm not surprised because yes. when I go out and knock on doors, you know, if you see, if it's garbage day, That's right. you see the green can, you always see yes. the blue can, which unfortunately isn't the case, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everywhere. But, yes. but the, the stuff gets divvied up mm -hmm. and it gets sold. So it's not just that we're not filling up that one landfill that we have quicker than we would before. That's right. But also that we're selling it, making revenue for the city by getting rid of waste without putting it in our landfill. So it's really a win-win all the way around. You, you said it correctly, it is a win-win. Um, so we're diverting waste from the landfill, uh, which reduces greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it prolongs the life of the landfill. Uh, we're reducing mileage, having to actually take the garbage out there, and then it brings in revenue to the city. So we have about a hundred and um, $25 million budget, um, and that's our cost to actually operate and provide solid waste services. So the revenue that we bring in from our recyclables is about $8 million uh, a year. Um, and there's, you know, the cost to process it and that sort of thing, but it helps us keep our costs down uh, for our customers. And so the current residential rate is $26.80. Um, that's for your garbage and your recycling. Um, and we haven't increased our rate in several years. And so by doing, um, recycling and other efficiencies that we've done throughout the years that's helped us keep our costs down. Well, I mean, you mentioned that to send the trucks out on the same day, mm -hmm. that's same a million, two or three yes. every year. Um, I guess more than we expected. Mm -hmm. um, but, but basically, the more people 
correctly recycle, yes. uh, the lower their bill is going to be. So everybody mm -hmm. has an incentive too. So that less greenhouse right. gases. It's just it's a point. That I'm repeating it, but it bears repeating. Yes. You know, this is kind of important. So to that end, so the recycling goes to the recycling stations. Mm -hmm. Do people pick through it? How, how do you get stuff that shouldn't be recycled or shouldn't have been in the blue container mm -hmm. out and make sure the good stuff gets where it needs to go so we can sell it for the best price? Yes. Can you explain how that works? Yeah, so we have a huge operation at both of our MRFs and actually the city of Phoenix, we were one of the first cities in the nation to actually do single stream recycling. Um, so what we wanted to do was make it convenient, recycling convenient for our customers by allowing you to put all your recyclables into one bin. So so if in other places, you know, especially in Europe and UK, they actually do source separating recycling where you put your glass in one container, your plastic in another, your cardboard and paper, that sort of thing. But in Phoenix, we said, put it all in one container. And that's the way it was growing up in a different state for me. Yes. That's okay. what we had. I yes. remember us sorting our stuff and everything, mm -hmm. trying to be good. Good folks <laughs> and sorting the milk container from the glass and everything. I remember that very well as a kid. Yeah, so we wanted to make it more convenient for our residents and customers. And so by doing that, it goes to the MRF and then by a process of technology as well as just our workers, people out there sorting the actual recyclables, that's how we get it all into the it's correct It's literally bin. item to item. It I mean, is. People don't realize that. It is. So yeah, so it goes across our conveyor belts and um, with our technology, it's able to pick out some of the recyclables like cardboard, you'll see it, it goes straight across the conveyor belt and then it actually ends up going to the right um, bin. And, um, but some other items, it, we actually need people on the machine to sort it. And really what they're trying to do is actually uh, pick out the contamination. So unfortunately with recyclables, um, individuals are still putting their recyclables in plastic bags. And that's mm -hmm. huge contamination for us. And so um, when it comes across- I feel so ahead of the curve knowing that that's yeah. wrong. <laughs> Yeah, so when the plastic bags are coming across the recycle bin, we have men and women that are there actually trying to catch it, pick it out so that it won't uh, damage the equipment. It can actually shut down the recycling, the, the MRF. I finally won that battle with my dad, by yes. the way. Reason, I'm like, the, the plastic, you got to get those bags. Yes. Don't put it in the bag. He thought he was doing the right thing, you know. Yes. And that's part of the reason I wanted to have you on was people, well-intentioned people, yes. might be doing it wrong. And that, yes. you know, that's that's almost worse than not recycling at all in some ways. That's right. And, and like you said, everyone's trying to do their part and they feel that they're doing it the right way. And we find that actually there's like one person in every household. Right. <laughs> they're recycling, but at the end of the day, they're putting it in their plastic bag and then putting it in the bin. But we say, nope, just empty it out. And then what we'd like for you to do with your plastic bags is actually you can take it to one of your local grocery stores, even Lowe's, um, a lot of the, our Home Depot. They actually have stations now where you can actually take your plastic bags. Usually right there. inside the front door. Right I take mine to, uh, to the grocery store I go yes. to. And uh, I think they want them bagged up. Is that correct? They're, they're different. You can actually, if you have a lot of plastic bags, you can just put them all in the plastic bag and then dump it in there. Or you can put them in there individually as well. Um, but the, the, the good thing is, is to, if you're actually taking them there, that's what we would prefer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's about 1%. Yes. I think of, of what would normally go to the landfill because they're not recyclable by our process, that, right? They gum up the machines is what I that think is I remember. Correct. Yeah. yeah, so they're not recyclable at the MRF. So they don't put your plastic the bags in the blue container. Yes. Take them to the grocery store, take them to, I think you said Home Depot and yep. Lowe's. Yes, hardware store. Um, and you know, worst case scenario, if you're using it to put other trash in, then that's fine too. But what happens is it goes to the landfill. They're light, so sometimes when we're hauling them out there, they actually will come off the truck. You might see them on the side of the road, you know, in other places across the country, you know, they end up in the ocean and that sort of thing. So we're just trying to do our part to help the environment and just don't put your recyclables in the plastic bag. Yeah. So, so what's the most common thing people recycle mm -hmm. that they shouldn't? Is there a most common thing? Well, really plastic bags is probably the most common. Okay. Um, the second after that is we see a lot of folks putting textiles, which is clothing, um, old handbags, um, belts, shoes. Um, we find that in a lot in the recycle bin. And so what we want individuals to do there is basically to donate those um, items. And there are boxes that 
do that. Mm -hmm. It's not the city of Phoenix, but there are companies, I've done that recently, yes. frankly. Uh, yes. You know, it gets, again, stuff out of the landfill that can get reused. That's right. You can take it to Goodwill, Valley Big Brothers, Big Sisters. There are companies that actually will come and pick up the textiles from you, your recyclables. Um, or, like you said, there's donation centers located You'll all throughout the city. You'll see them in grocery store parking lots, church parking mm -hmm. lots, yes, uh, CBS, shopping malls, shop absolutely. Malls. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're, they're pretty prevalent if you really start to look for them. They're definitely right. out there. They may be for profit. Mm -hmm. uh, they may be charitable. But regardless, anything that keeps it out of the landfill, I personally think is a good thing. Yes, there's for-profit, non-profit, but it's going to a good cause. And, and you're repurposing it. So, you know, back in the day, we used to do hand-me-downs. <laughs> and then once you couldn't use it anymore, then you would donate it. And so that's what we would encourage. Well, you guys have done a great job of getting, and we discussed this before the show, about getting into the uh, newspaper, at least. And I think yes. there's also been uh, news clips on the, on the various mm -hmm. uh, news shows around town you know, about what you should be recycling and what you're not. Yes. One thing that surprised me that I learned from the articles was pizza boxes. Yeah. So if you get the grease on the bottom of the box, then it's, then it's, it should go in the green bin, mm -hmm. the, the solid waste, is that correct? Yes, so um, whenever we're, at, we're out at community meetings, we always get the pizza box question. Uh, it's a very popular question. And so the cardboard is recyclable, um, but a lot of times with the pizza, it may get the grease on the bottom of the cardboard box. Um, so what we're saying is, well, tear the box in two, right? The top part where there's no grease, go ahead and put it in your recycle bin. You mentioned the tan container um, that we offer to residents as well for, for composting. And so if you have green organics, um, your yard waste, um, tree clippings, um, grass clippings, that sort of things, um, you could actually put it into a tan container. And so, so you the, can put the contaminated pizza box in the, the tan container? The, the bottom of that you could, or oh. to compost, uh, or you can put it into your uh, garbage container. I didn't know this. This yeah. is exciting yeah. news for yeah. me. This yeah. is breaking news right here on uh, on our show. This right. is very it's, exciting. It's um, a little bit harder to break down, but mm -hmm. we can we can work with it. All right, because I, I love my tan can. <laughs> I, we, yes. We're here at the creation for the tan can, yes. and I think it's five dollars a month, right, to have a tan can. Yes. And it's not available all around the city, so maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Right. So what we have uh, for all of our residents, everyone gets a garbage container, um, the green container, or a blue container for your recyclable. Um, we did a study a few years ago and we said, what are people throwing away? What are we finding um, that's going to the landfill? And the majority of what was being thrown away was yard waste. And so we created a pilot program called our Curbside Green Organics Program where you can get the tan container, the three co third container, um, for five bucks a month additional on top of your residential, your solid waste fee. And uh, we'll bring out that tan container. We pick it up once a week as well. And again, you, it's mostly for your yard waste. So tree trimmings, grass clippings, that sort of thing. Um, but it's great because what we found was 30% of what we're sending to the landfill is actually yard waste. And do I remember, is it 150,000 houses that are eligible for the tan can? And yes. where are those located? Yeah, so it's 150,000 houses um, located throughout the city. And basically it's in areas where there's a lot of um, lush properties, a lot of um, houses where you, they have lots of trees and grass and that sort of thing. Obviously if they don't, they would have a lot less yes. use for the tan can. That is correct. Yeah, if you're doing zero scaping and, and that sort of thing. those cans are expensive. Are they 60 bucks a pop? Or? They are. They are. Um, so it is a, somewhat of a deal <laughs> because we wanted to divert that waste from the landfill. But residents can actually go online uh, to our website at phoenix.gov backslash reimagine phoenix and they can get more information about the curbside green organics program and they can see if they're in one of the qualifying areas. Qualifying areas, yeah, mm -hmm. because they get used a lot. In my yes. neighborhoods, I have a lot of plants. My neighbors have a lot of plants. Yes. Uh, obviously, those plants need to get trimmed from time mm -hmm. to time. So I've been thrilled and, and kind of shocked at how often I fill up my tan can yes. that used to go unfortunately to the landfill mm -hmm. so this is this is a really good program and I appreciate I know you were helping spearhead that it's yes. really been an important one and uh, as you said you know I didn't I wasn't even aware of this it's just got how dramatic mm -hmm. it, it, the change can be yes yes so no it's been a great program and again what we wanted to do was look at what's the low-hanging fruit if we really want to make a difference and we're if we're trying to achieve our 40 percent diversion goal then where should we be focusing our efforts and green waste was one of those um, areas that we were able to create a program so that we could tackle it. Well now in this day and age of course everybody's got electronics. They have yeah. phones and old VCRs yes. or whatever. 
not supposed to throw those in the landfill. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, how did consumers yes. deal with that? So we are e-waste, electronic waste. Um, so what we do as a city of Phoenix is we do household hazardous waste events um, nine times throughout the year. So we try to hit every single council district. And what uh, our residents could do is actually bring their electronics um, to one of the household hazardous waste events or HHW events. And then we will recycle the, that material. Um, if you're not able to make it to one of our events, and th these events are free as well, um, if you're not able to make it I've out. been to them, you just drive up yeah. and they They're, take your stuff take and it. that's it. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, but if you're not able to do that, you can also go to your local Best Buy store and they take those items back there as well. I did not well. know that. Mm -hmm. thank, you, thank you for yeah. sharing that. That's yeah. important, uh, important information. Yes. And then, so we want to do our part, but we also want to highlight other businesses um, that are also um, focusing on recycling and repurposing items as well. So I think, uh, batteries and that sort of thing as well, you can take them back. I think the phone companies will take back your old phone if you're... Yes, they've been doing that for a long yeah. time. Um, the phone companies, they will actually take your old cell phones and then what they do with that is they will actually donate them and give them to victims of domestic violence and that sort of you know, thing um, to help out in that area. So and it's an emergency phone. So that, that's that been going on for actually a very long could time. Could not be a more meritorious goal. It's just, yes. it's a nice public-private partnership and that's, and that's right. a good way for things to work out that, again, don't go into the landfill because yes. we only got one of them. Yes. Chemicals, so mm -hmm. paint, paint yes. thinner, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do with that? Yeah, so paint, chemicals, that sort of thing. That is also a part of our household hazardous waste program. So we want individuals to bring that waste. Please don't put it out uh, in your recycling can or in your garbage container or even in bulk trash um, because our drivers are picking it up. It's hazardous material and that sort of thing. So what we say is please bring them to the HHW event as well. Uh, or you can drop them off at one of our two uh, transfer stations um, located throughout the city as well. So how do you guys dispose of it? Yeah, so what we do is we have contracts and um, part of our Reimagine Phoenix effort, we actually put out a call uh, to the public, to businesses, and said, hey, are you able to take our paint and recycle it? So a lot of times, um, before we actually put this out, we would take the paint and we would partner with like the Neighborhood Services Department program with the Graffiti Busters program, and they could actually reuse the, the paint and then give it out to help combat graffiti. Um, but now we have contracts with businesses where they're able to come and take the paint and then repurpose it. Um, so they do it with the paint, they do it with carpet. It's pretty amazing things that we're able to do um, by not sending this waste to the landfill and then finding new uses for it. Because that stuff's really bad for the environment. It so is. it's great to have it go somewhere else. Yes. Anywhere yes. else is better than just putting it in the landfill. So yes. uh, batteries, mm -hmm. same thing, right? So, so batteries, um, actually we would, that's a, where we're still working on. We don't have a vendor actually to take batteries, um, but you could take it to a HHW event. Um, you could take it back to Best Buy. I know that they do do battery recycling there as well. Um, and then, you know, yeah, as a last resort, a last re resort, we would say put it into the garbage container, but not into the recycling bin. So with all this recycling going on, we have goals going forward. How do we stack up with other cities? I mean, what, what's realistic for Phoenix going forward? Obviously, we're a growing city. We're we kind of we're spread out. We're different than other cities that are more compact. Um, and are older than us and had, you know, advantages of time. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Yes. So we have very ambitious goals uh, for the city of Phoenix. And so we have a, a goal to achieve a 40% diversion rate by the year 2020. So that's right around the corner. There it is. And what are then, we doing now? And right now we're at 30% diversion. And so, we had a little ways to go. And we got a little ways to go. So to get to 30 to 40, that still is a stretch for us. Um, and so that's why we're creating all these programs with mattresses recycling, with carpet recycling, with paint recycling. Um, that's why we have the Green Organics program is to help us to get to our diversion goal. Um, but after 2020, we have a new goal to achieve a zero waste um, diversion by the year 2050. So that's trying to get into the 90%. So you asked how do we stack up to other cities. Um, so the national average for diversion nationwide is about 34%. So we're a little below the national so average. So a little below the national trying average. Trying to get above the national trying average. Trying to get above the national average. But the unique thing about Phoenix is everything we do is on a voluntary basis. So if you're comparing us to a Portland or Seattle or California cities or cities back east, they have what I call mandates 
fees and fines. <laughs> we don't do that in, here in Phoenix. Um, so we don't legislate. And so that's why it's really important for us to work with our customers and work with residents. And, and that's why education is so important to us about you know what to recycle, what not to recycle, and just getting everybody on board um, to do their part when it comes to recycling. But that's, the, that's what makes uh, Phoenix very unique. Um, but other cities are watching us. And actually, um, we received an award recently by Waste Dive Magazine. It's a solid waste industry magazine for um, diversion uh, being the transformer uh, city of the year to achieve our waste diversion goal. So that's pretty impressive. What's the name of the magazine? <laughs> waste Dive. Waste Dive. Waste Dive. Oh, I like it. Very hip. Very yes. cutting edge. Yes. Waste Dive. Waste I'll have Dive. To, I'll have yeah. to get a subscription. That's, that's right. exciting stuff. But uh, <laughs> Well, that's it. It's interesting. It sounds like uh, you know things are moving in the right direction. Um, yes. Where were we in the year 2000? Mm -hmm. So in the year 2000, actually, we were doing recycling. We've been doing recycling for over 30 years. Sure. Um, but we weren't focused. We weren't looking at, so what we're doing right now is we're actually creating economic um, <laughs> development activity and opportunities from our waste. And so we really have transformed how we look at processing um, our garbage. And, and, and who knew that solid waste, right, and economic development go hand in hand. So in 2000, um, I'm not quite sure what our diversion rate was at the time, but I can tell you once we, when we implemented our Reimagine Phoenix goal, we were at a 16% diversion rate. So we've gone from 16% to 30% over time. Again? And that would have been back in 2013. So, so it, it, things have really ramped up. Mm -hmm. uh, really, in my time in the council, yes. obviously it was unfair to ask you, you know, 2,000 oh, statistics tell us <laughs> what, what was going on then. But, but I guess my point is, you know, that yes. the pace of improvement is accelerating. Yes. And, and that's good for residents. Um, particularly when you're considering we're a much bigger city than we were yes. 20 years ago. That's you know? right. That's right. So, yeah, fifth largest city in the nation. And we serve 400,000 residents each and every day. Um, and so, again, a million tons of trash, sending it to the landfill. Um, th that's, a lot of, that's a lot of garbage. <laughs> and we're tr really trying to do our part. And, and so we're working, it's a partnership, really, between us and the community. So the bulk trash, mm -hmm. can you explain a little bit how that, because there have been some tweaks to the program and so yeah. forth, but it's one that uh, certainly, my neighborhood, it gets yeah. used mm -hmm. a lot. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so bulk trash is what we basically offer um, to every neighborhood on a quarterly basis. Um, and these are for the big bulky items that don't fit into your garbage container or your recycling bin. And so like you could put your yard waste out um, when it's time for your bulk trash. You could put couches out there, um, just big things, uh, microwaves, whatever. And our drivers will come through on a quarterly basis and pick up those items. Better if to recycle. It, better to take it to Goodwill, that's better right. to put it in a tan can, but yes. that's not always possible. That's not always possible. And so, um, but if you can't wait for the bulk trash program to come, you can actually call our department, call Public Works, and we will have p individuals who will come up and pick up those items for a small fee. Like if you have an old refrigerator you're trying to toss out and that sort of thing. Um, uh, one of the things that has been a problem for us, though, are old televisions, CRTs. So you can still put them out, but it, it costs us a lot of money. And so um, we're processing them because a lot of times uh, Goodwill or other place won't take those. So that is a challenge. So hold on to those TVs for as long as you can. <laughs> Pass them down to your kids, <laughs> relatives. Yes. Well, I, uh, it is amazing when you look at TV technology, yes. where it is from where it was just even a few years ago. That's right. um, just <laughs> Just go to Costco and yes. compare that to something you have in your attic, and it's uh, kind of amazing. <laughs> yes. But no, it's 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 kind of amazing. Uh, this is a, something that's sort of a, of interest to me is yeah. is people's behavior changing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think as you said, without forcing people, that's we are not right. a city that, generally speaking, right. we're sort of a live and let live unless there's a safety issue. Yes. Um, maybe it's surprising to residents, but we're mm -hmm. kind of a complaint-driven system in a lot of areas. Yeah and uh, also a volunteer system, which I think is appropriate. I also think that it fits our sort of southwestern heritage of, of independence and everything. But uh, I know, very proud of it in District 2, how much recycling is going on. Is there a huge spread between, say, the district I represent, which we know because I bragged <laughs> about it um, a couple times, yes. probably insufferably so, um, you know, between 
say my district and a district that's not recycling as much, I mean, how much of a spread is there? Yes, so we do know that there is a difference in the recycling rate uh, as well as the contamination rate compared to your district um, up north as compared to other districts in other areas. So what we know is what we really need to do is focus and do more educational outreach um, in the southwest part of town. Um, so that, that would be my you know, area of town, South Phoenix, and then the West Valley. Um, and so what we're doing is we've got our top 10 in the bin campaign, uh, and we're really trying to educate individuals on, okay, if you're gonna recycle, this is what we want you to focus on. Um, we're also um, doing a lot of outreach Spanish speaking as well, because there are some cultural differences there as well. So it's all about education. And we also have our new Recycle Bank program, which is available to our customers and the information is available in English and Spanish as well. So the spread, it can, um, it can be as much as a 10 point spread or it could be as low as, you know, so um, it's pretty considerable. Few, but yes, mm -hmm. and, but we've got that information, we've got that data, and it also helps us when we're going out and into the neighborhoods and, and doing community outreach and education efforts. Any of the new programs shown to be sort of closing that gap mm -hmm. or? Yeah, so with um, Recycle Bank, what we we actually almost have 90,000 people who've gone on, our, our customers, who've gone on and registered for that program. And we can actually see how often they're going on, the articles they're reading, the videos they're watching to help with the education. We're going to do a survey in the spring to actually see if it's um, increased our diversion rates, our recycling diversion rates, as well as to see if it's decreased contamination. So we don't have those numbers just yet, but we're working on it. Um, but also with working with Recycle Bank, they're helping us tout our um, green organics program. So we've seen an increase in participants in that program, as well as we have a program, if you're throwing away less trash, you can actually save $3 a month by going to a smaller um, garbage container. I meant to mention that program. Yes, yeah. yeah. so it's our uh, Save As You Reduce and Recycle program, say R&R. &R. And so we've actually seen an uptick in that program as well. I think you well. just reminded me to get the smaller can yes. because with my tan <laughs> can now, I don't uh, don't need the bigger can. That's right. Most, most weeks anyway. That's right, so if people are recycling more, if they have the, the third container, the tan can, then they don't, they're not throwing away as much, right? And so you might as well save money for that. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I appreciate you coming on and, and informing us about this. I hope it was educational for the audience. It certainly was educational to me. And uh, thank you, Ginger. Thank you for your good works. And, and if you have any questions or comments, please call my office at 602-262-7445 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district two. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the issues.